Hello, everybody, and welcome to Digital Woodcarver. My name is Lainey Shaughnessy, and tonight I am co-hosting with Burl Tishner of Hello. Digital Woodcarver. And we are going to talk to you guys and girls about starting a business or generating an income with your CNC machine. Burl, how are you doing, sir? We're doing great. I see some comments talking about the snow. And here in Indiana, we did, uh, we're getting uh, one to three inches. It's pretty slushy out there. It took me about 40 minutes to get home this evening, which is normally a 10 minute drive. So, uh, but we're doing great, fabulous inside, nice and warm and excited. I know uh, we've had a lot of requests. It's been a while since you and I have done one of these live shows. We did it a has, bunch it has. back and in when there's first COVID and stuff, but yeah. Absolutely. And, and with, with 2021, uh, we're starting a new, basically kind of a series, if you will. Yep. Uh, this is our first video of the year. And uh, every last Wednesday of the month, uh, we will be uh, doing a progression of videos, uh, whether it's uh, project demos or product demos, should I say, or discussions like this. And hopefully uh, the platform uh, will be entertaining to you guys and girls, informative for, you know, uh, being the most important factor in things and that y'all enjoy it. And by that, uh, if you are new to watching us or if you're just now kind of visiting us either on YouTube or Facebook, if you're on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button, click that notification bell. So you get notified of any new videos that we release. Uh, check us out on Facebook as well, the digital woodcarver Facebook page. Uh, and, uh, that'll be a great way to get notifications of updates. And we always put posts out and uh, Jake, uh, our marketing guy is doing a great job. Welcome Jake. He's in Thailand. He's joining us tonight in the, in the chat area and everything. Uh, but um, uh, he's over there working hard for us. And um, uh, he's always putting out cool posts and advertisements yes. and stuff on Facebook. And also keep an eye out for those things. Cause we always run all kinds of little specials and deals and contests. We got some cool contests yeah. this year. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, Burl, one of the things uh, you know that we did uh, right towards the, I would say the last quarter of uh, 2020, is we put out a questionnaire or a survey to the customers, uh, our customers, uh, and we wanted to get their insider input on how they're doing with their CNC machines, their digital wood carvers, how they're doing as far as uh, they're generating an income or right. business. Uh, and um, we got some of their feedback and stuff. And that's what we're going to be sharing. We're going to be sharing our customers insights. And then, of course, Burl and I are going to share uh, our, our insights as well. Yeah. Um, if I love that. In, yep, absolutely. And let me I didn't mean to cut you off there, Burl. Oh, but I just want to say a few ladies and gentlemen, if y'all have any questions, um, we're going to we're going to try to Burl's going to keep an eye on those. And I will as well. And we're going to try to to get round of back around to those uh towards the end uh and stuff uh if it's a if it's a question that bro uh you know sees and wants to jump in he'll answer and everything but we're going to try to put that towards the tail end so don't don't despair we're going to we'll, we'll try to catch as many questions as we can and everything um and bro you know uh you were talking about the weather when we just began you know uh, my last day up in indiana this sunday i got to see a little bit of that snow as i was driving home but I was layered up and as I was driving back to Florida, those layers kept peeling off and I was ended up with a t-shirt by the time I got here. It's very warm here. So I'm not going to brag or anything about that, but uh, uh, let's get on into it. Uh, let's uh, let's let's share the screen, bro. And let's show people what uh, what we did here. Um, what we what we did is, uh, like I said, we put out a um, a survey uh i guess you know of questionnaires and everything and because burl and i over the years we have either uh you know with new customers and stuff we've either helped uh kind of guide them in, in into the type of uh, you know carvings or, or the things that run with their machine and then and then if they've had questions on hey how do you price your projects which is always a right. tough question for us to answer and everything but our experience and, and burl's business experience and background mine as well we've been able to kind of uh, we bring a little bit of something to the table for the customers, but then it's up to them to really in their community and their network and stuff kind of really push. And so we kind of wanted to find out a little bit about what they did yeah, uh, and everything. And so um, let's uh, let's take a look at uh, some of the things we did and, 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 and everything. Now we don't need to introduce myself. I'm Laney Shaughnessy and we've uh, brought digital, but uh, yeah. one of the things that uh, everybody always asks for, because is the market saturated? Uh, is there marketing potential for custom wood products? 
uh, and custom CNC card products and everything? And that's a very good question, you know, uh, because there are, you know, hey, bro, in 2021, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, CNC users, it's becoming more and more uh, uh, relevant in the shop now, which is great. You know, before it was a little taboo, but now it's like, you know, people are getting in there. So I'm loving to see all those CNC users come in and everything. And so one of the things uh, that uh, we, you know, one of the questions that we posed uh, was, you know, what is the market potential for wood carving and sign? And we wanted to see what our customers uh, actually said, their, their answers and everything. And um, uh, we had uh, John McMillan, uh, he's a customer, he says, you know, his opinion is people love custom made products. Uh, they, uh, it, it's a matter of finding a niche, you know, and, and, or, you know, a, a product that uh, you're good at. And I always right. tell people start out with one or two things. Don't try to make everything um, that, that would be, you, you kind of set yourself up for failure a little bit because you might not be able to keep up uh, with demand, but start out with a few uh, things right. and uh, do them really well affordable price and everything and really just kind of grow from there. And that's what, that's what uh, John McMillan was trying to say uh, with me. My product uh, was uh, I start off with was coaster sets, custom coaster sets. And, um, and then I kind of transitioned, I was in the kitchen phase. So it was coaster sets, then cutting boards uh, and things. And then from there, you know, just, it went into custom signs and stuff like that. So do you agree with that, bro? That, you know, start off, Right. That, and, and I tell people a lot of times, you know, find some place that, you know, you're passionate about and, and you're exactly right. Find those niches. And one of the things that you, you find and a lot of our customers do, and by the way, I love this when uh, you and Jake uh, come up with this idea of pulling from our customers um, yep. because it's, it's not us saying it, you know, we're with the company and certainly we're going to talk good about it, but uh, I love this information. But what I find with customers a lot of times they may start out in one area and you may end up in a place that you really had no clue when you started, um, whether it's a local club, local school, or, and we'll get into more of that a little bit later, but yeah, you may start it in one direction and you'll end up going one way or the other into something totally different. And that's cool absolutely. Thing. Yep. And, uh, you know, Mickey good, Mickey good's been a customer for a long time. And, uh, you know, for him, once again, you know, it was, the market was very good in his local area, the local markets, uh, like right. the farmers markets, the flea markets, the little craft fairs and things and stuff. Um, he says, you know, in his local area, it was really good for him. But online, you kind of need that niche product, you know, to maybe stand out a little bit, that niche product, that demand. And I, I kind of agree with that a little bit. But, uh, uh, you know, like I said, if you have something that you do really well and people just are attracted to it, then you'll be you'll be fine. Um, we had uh, John Cummings is, says that, you know, he does with his uh, business, bro, he does very little advertising. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, he also works a full time job. Now, in his first year, he did about 5,000 in sales. You know, that wasn't too bad. Uh, and he's, he, he most definitely, you know, for a fact says, you know, he believes if he did it full time, that he could see, you know, up, upwards of an 80,000 a year income. Uh, you know, uh, and uh, I, we, we've had customers, uh, Brandon Wyckoff does a nice income with his machine and stuff like that. So I, I, I don't think that's too high of a number to reach to uh, if you do it right, you know, the right marketing materials and you just, you know, you put yourself out there, Instagram and all those things. I think that's right. a very obtainable uh, number. I don't think it's too much of a stretch um, uh, because it can be done. Well, and that brings up a good point. And I, I, once again, we're this whole conversation, I hope I don't step into it. No, you know, we're all, all limited. I mean, virtually we're doing a, a show right now, a live show where, you know, in years past we would be, uh, I forgot what weekend it's coming up, uh, Laney, but right. we would be literally uh, doing our show circuit. We would have had three, three shows under our belt or, or four, whatever weekend it is in here in January, starting at January 1st. And customers are the same way. Um, you This past year, in order to do it, we find that uh, online is one of those areas that, you know, you have to depend upon more. Um, which, yeah. yeah, that's exactly right. Because, you know, like even with the local markets uh, here in Ocala, Florida, the farmer's market and thing that was, you know, every Saturday downtown, you know, for a while there, it was completely right. cut out. Uh, there's now everybody, you know, they're wearing masks still and, and, and all right. that stuff, but they're now the markets are back and, and things are starting to kind of roll again. But yeah, 
you know, having to go uh, online was, was a big thing. And that's the same with us, just like you said. Now, right. you know, Michael Tischler, uh, he's down here in Florida. He's in my neck of the woods, about 45 minutes away. And uh, he's he, he's adamant, you know, it's, it's a very high market because people will buy customized products easily. Yeah. Um, you know, I think if you have a unique product uh, that, uh, you know, that you can't just run down to Walmart or, uh, you know, Costco or whatever and get, I don't know the, the stores, uh, uh, but um, uh, if you have a unique product, people will buy that and they'll, they'll pay your price. But again, pricing is one of those things. That's the toughest part of the, of the whole ordeal. Right. Um, the, uh, this image here, bro, I wanted to share this. The, we, yeah. I mentioned Brandon Wyckoff. Uh, this is one of Brandon's uh, photos of his mail out Monday. Every Monday, these are his shipments that goes out uh, and stuff. And uh, this is one of many photos that he has posted over the year. And they're pretty much his little cart that he takes to the post office and stuff. They're pretty much staying consistent. And it's wonderful. He makes beautiful uh, yeah. plaques uh, for different uh, agencies and things like that. Right. And, uh, and uh, yeah, and military so and stuff. Yeah. exactly. And so there is a you just got to find, you know, what what's what's going to suit for you. So I wanted to share that photo because that was just a that's a that's a really nice uh, visual. Yeah. Um, now, what from the market and everything, we turned around and said, OK, guys and girls, how does your digital woodcarver make new income a possibility, right? So that's what we're interested in. That's what Burl and I want to know is, is you know, uh, the product that Burl manufactures and makes, his baby, how's it helping you make an income and how would it help you guys and girls that are watching now if you join the digital woodcarver family? And so uh, when with regards to new income, uh, Gary C says, you know, uh, being able to make any signs, plaques, uh, pictures, boxes, and do custom detail writings on, you know, people's names and things like that. That's that being able to customize the product is what really is, you know, that's what the digital wood carver is doing for him to make money. And that's, you know, that's, of course, we, we can expect that, right? Because that's what a CNC allows us to do best, right, bro, is customize products and projects, not just products, but projects as well. Right. And that's, you know, I tell people and they sometimes I get the question of is, well, is there somebody else in my area that owns a digital wood carver? Are they going to be, you know, will I be able to sell it? And and my answer is literally you could have six different people on the same street and literally have six different markets doing six different things that are totally separate from each other. And that's the unique thing about it. It's it's not a one horse pony where, you know, you just make the little plaques. I mean, we got a lot of different options. And and even in that arena, you know, you can go into some acrylics and, and different things that that people have done and stuff that we wouldn't even thought of. Our customers have. Right. Been yeah, there's, there's some kind of there's some own. projects. I love seeing the customer projects when they share photos with me. And there's some projects is like, oh, man, that's a cool idea. You know, right. and you just you you think about it. Um, we had, uh, with, with regards to, uh, the new income question, uh, Philip Ball, uh, right. Philip says, you know, it, it allows him to generate income, uh, income by making simple products from his raw materials, right. From raw materials. Sure. So, uh, I'm a big advocate of there's no scrap in the shop when there's a CNC in that shop, you know, and, uh, I mean, you, you can, you can really, uh, do some nice things, business card holders and all down to the smallest right. piece and everything. So uh, Philip, with his raw materials and, and things, whether it be wood or plastics or acrylics, like Burl was mentioning uh, and things like that, that's what's you know working for him. Uh, that's, that's what the CNC does uh, for him and everything. Um, we had uh, Mickey Good. Mickey Good uh, jumped in and says just, again, it comes down to customizing, being able to customize you know, there's niche products and stuff and everything. So uh, customization is very, is, is a key thing, being able to put your little touch on it, you know? Um, so uh, Tim brings up a good point uh, with his answer. Uh, it was, uh, you know, the machine does a lot, it, it, you know, carving, routing, uh, cutting. Uh, you don't have to buy a whole lot of specialized right. machines. We have a lot of customers, bro, that the CNC, uh, is the only machine that they have. And it's kind of the first machine they ever purchased before, you know, a table saw or anything like that, you know, that's kind of where they started. And, uh, you know, who knows what they've added there, but, you know, a lot of our customers just work with a CNC, you know, so you don't have to have a whole lot of specialized tools because it's kind of a, 
it's not an all in one. I can't say that, you know, it's right. not an all in one, but it does do a lot. You know, it does, it does uh, uh, sure. a lot and everything. Um, so, uh, you know, with that question, you know, kind of getting the feedback, you know, of how it helps make income. Um, I wanted to kind of get a feel good question. You know, how, how, how do you feel about using your digital carver to make money? You know, how, how does it make you feel when you're creating custom products and things like that? And bro, I loved the uh, feedback and I just kind of, I'm going to throw it all up here just to some of the, you know, relaxing, proud, love it. Not quite full time yet, but I'm close. So, you know, people are kind of preparing for retirement and things like that. And, um, uh, you know, great. It helps pay for vacations, you know, um, uh, one gentleman, uh, the one that really, uh, struck me and, and you can barely read it on the screen, but it says, um, being disabled, uh, disability, wow. being on disability retirement, it helps him have a purpose and helps contribute financially. Nice. That, that, that's a big one. That really hit me hard because you know it gave you know to feel like you know hey this one of our products gave someone that made them feel good about being able to contribute to their household or financially you know because right. they may not have been able to do something in the past that's pretty awesome so i really like that and i wanted to share that uh and everything. yeah we do i mean uh, there's certainly whether it's a disability or um you know i'm not getting any younger but the older we get you know whether it's our eyesight uh seeing those details uh, or our physical hands not being able to, to hold that. We do get that question, honestly, more than uh, I would have expected. So that is a good point. Um, yeah. You know, with that and, and let me just kind of preface that a little bit. Uh, you know, back or, you know, years back and all, a CNC was kind of like almost like taboo, you know, one, because it was kind of unaffordable or unattainable, uh, sure. you know, to most and all. But now they're becoming more and more affordable. And Digital Wood Carver is one of the most affordable CNCs on the market. But, uh, our hand carvers, right? We're not taking away from those hand wood carvers right. and everything and, and everything. And what I, what I, uh, when I, the last couple of shows that we actually did, uh, out in the field, bro, uh, I talked with a lot of hand carvers and believe it or not, a lot of them are getting up there in age and they're getting, um, carpal tunnel and things like that in their right. hands. And they're actually using a CNC to do the rough carving. Right of their projects and then they're doing the little finished detail work and all so the cnc is just another tool in right. their shop right so uh you know that's that's really uh, a great uh and everything um so moving on uh everybody um what you can make right uh so we know with a cnc or, or most of us know that you can carve in woods hardwood softwood yeah. plywood melamine mdf masonite things like that uh, you can carve in plastics, acrylics, composites, and foams uh, yeah. with a diamond bit. Uh, you know, a diamond bit. You could etch in glass, tile, quarry, marble, granite. You know, and uh, and and uh, non-ferrous metals and stuff. And even with the right metal carving bits and the right you know feeds and speeds and stuff, you can carve in your non-ferrous metals. You know, name tags and and other things and stuff. So there's a lot of stuff. So you could be in your neighborhood with a CNC with the different potential. Yeah. Right. You could be that go-to woodworker or that go-to person to get a custom item or a product and everything. And that's really word of mouth and, and all that stuff. That's really good uh, marketing potential and everything. I have do you two, do that, bro? I do. I have two odd things that you didn't bring up, which is unconventional type of things. Uh, we do have a couple ice sculptures. They actually carve yeah. ice. And the other unique one that I've seen is um, like an elk antler. Um, actually, you know, the big flat area of that one yes. of our customers did that. So, yeah. And, and people will ask me sometimes what, what all will it cut? And obviously we don't know everything. All we can go from is what some of our customers have done or you and I have experimented with. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, limit, limitless of, of all the different materials and stuff. Yeah. And, and we know, you know, we and, and being realistic and all, we know that it can't cut everything, right? It's not a plasma cutter. It's not this, it's not that. But there is so many different materials that it can carve or engrave or, or cut into. And now, bro, we have the six watt laser, right? So now we have laser engraving for our 2440 and our 1824. Right. Even our bigger units can attach a, the laser to it. Uh, but uh, that gives a whole nother, yes, a whole nother area of things and stuff and all. So that's pretty cool. Um, we, uh, you know, uh, we asked the question uh, why a CNC? And, and, and this is more, not a question to our customers, but just uh, a question 
that, that someone asked, why would I want to see and see, right? And um, the uh, answers that we have, and I'm going to kind of just throw them on the screen here as I, as I talk about them is, is because there is market potential for those custom products. Uh, right. You don't need a whole lot of specialized tools or experience or training. Uh, the design software and the controller software, especially the Vetric line of software we work with, is very user friendly. Uh, it's 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 very intuitive. Uh, with Digital Wood Carver, we are proud uh, to say that we do provide a high level of uh, training uh, and, and and our standards and our customer service and everything. And so, with the low learning curve, uh, customers with very little experience in woodworking or or what right. have you can really do some amazing things um, and, and everything. Uh, so that is a good, if, if I could say that was kind of one of the main reasons why a CNC machine. Yeah. Uh, it's it's not as, I, I don't want to say, I don't want to uh, say I, I'm not knocking other tools or anything because I'm a woodworker. I work with all kinds of tools, but sure. th there's a, there's a, with a CNC, there's a lot of good safety factors you know, right. the only dangerous part of CNC is that little router bit spinning and you've got, you know, so much table around you. If you just kind of, you know, pay attention to what you're doing, it's a very safe machine. It's great for kids, the family, husband, wife, uncles, grandparents, whatever. You know, it's 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 a, it's 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 a good machine to uh, start young, old, right. doesn't matter. Right. Well, one um, of the things that uh, Laney, I wanted to give you an example and in, in our, our, you know, technology has changed. You know, uh, we don't realize it, but um, like cameras today, you know, not too many years ago, uh, camcorders and, you know, whether it is, you know, the film cameras and stuff. I mean, we have in our pockets cameras that are able to make very, very nice videos, very, very nice pictures. Well, it's the same with a CNC. Technology has brought it to where, you know, used to, unfortunately, the hand carvers was where you got this unique one-off type of thing. Now right. you have the ability, um, you know, if you see something and you like it, you have the ability to create that. It's it's not something yeah. that you have to depend on somebody that, that basically spends their whole life creating an art of hand carving. You can create those. And that technology has helped us bring that along. Um, and that's where the CNC uh, software, yeah. even the machines, where people now don't have to depend on somebody that is, you know, that's all they do is one specialty thing. They can bring it, make something unique that they would like to be, see or personalize in their life or turn around and sell it. Absolutely. And, you know, uh, CNC has been around for a long time. It used to be NC, you know, before computer and American control. Uh, and, uh, you know, before it was unattainable, it was mostly big corporations and things sure. like that. And, but now we're getting to the garage shop and weekend woodworker and things and right. the hobbyist and stuff. And, and it gives, the, now it's giving us the regular people, right? The ability right. to do some pretty cool things. And, uh, you know, I'm, there is a question I'm going to answer and all, uh, uh, Steve asked is why is it so versatile? Right. right. Well, uh, I, I I can't say I didn't invent the CNC machine, right? So I don't know why it's so versatile, but it is because we can't, we, with the right type of cutter bit, the router, router bit, uh, and uh, everything, we can carve a variety of materials. And if you look at the products that are around you everywhere uh, and, and things, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that, that you can do because you are able to use different cutters and tools and things. Right. Uh, whether it be 2D or 3D or uh, assembly of, of furniture or whatever the case may be. So it is a versatile tool. And uh, why is it so versatile? That's that's a, that's one of those mysteries, right? But it is. It's a great versatile tool that everybody should have. And, bro, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I answered that correctly. But it's yeah, just, you did a good job. Use multiple cutters. We right. can use multiple cutters and we can carve multiple materials. So it, it makes it a versatile machine, right? Well, and, it. Uh, uh, yeah, it, it, uh, there's a comment to come up. Uh, I want to uh, talk about that got me laughing, but you are correct. And one of the things that you can start doing is in your projects, you can do, you know, like you can cut it out. You can create like a V carve or that or some 3D images. So not only is right. it just a one type of carving in the wood, it can be multiple ones in the same way. And, uh, you know, you can do some some carving, 
do some laser, you know, that work in combination with it. Um, and and Absolutely. what makes me laugh is somebody said that uh, you can laser images in pumpkin pie. Pumpkin um, pies, yes. Which, yeah. uh, and, and one of our customers, yeah. one of our customers, bro, uh, did some laser engraving on Christmas cookies. Nice, uh, nice. And, uh, for for Christmas, and it was amazing. It was right. amazing. They shared those photos on our on our on our group and everything, uh, and it was pretty cool. But yeah, you um, did a good job answering that. And uh, all right, good. It, yeah, and it, it, it's. I, you can do a lot of different things and certainly, uh, you know, we could list all those cutting out, you know, doing images, 3D, um, different type of material <laughs> and stuff. And that's one of the things that is, um, you know, makes it versatile. Absolutely. Now, Burl, uh, you know, CNC's, uh, even though that digital wood carver is a very affordable CNC for uh, users uh, that are just getting into it or experienced users as well and businesses and stuff, uh, there's still there's still a, a, it's still a cost to it. Right. Exactly. Uh, so we yeah. wanted to ask the customers, uh, you know, how long did it take you to pay right. off your CNC with the profits from your carvings and projects? And uh, we had an overwhelming 37 uh, percent. Um, that uh, said that they're currently still working on it. Okay. Uh, 27% said it took them less than six months uh, to pay off their machine. Uh, we had 18% that said it took them less than a year. And another 18% said it took them less than two years. Right. So the 37, uh, I'm going to attribute to a lot of them are new owners and things like that, that we put the survey out to and stuff. Uh, but uh, uh, that's kind of the breakdown. And so, um, with uh, depending on how you go at it, how you right. market your stuff or or how often you're selling, you might be just selling, you know, here and there when someone asks you, it may take you longer to get that return on that investment. Uh, but if you're really kind of pushing it and doing those markets and those craft fairs and online and Etsy and all that stuff, you know, you could uh, you could see that return very in a very short span. So that was good to kind of get the feedback from the customers on right. on that. And, and 27 cents and, you know, six months that they, they paid it off and. And uh, which was pretty cool. Nice. Um, yeah, it is. The, uh, and, this, and this is raw data from our, our customers. We didn't pay them or anything. Nope. And that's what I think I, I like about it is, you know, yeah, we ask those questions, but, you know, we can guess at what it is, but that is their response. It wasn't us, you know, guessing, grabbing these numbers out the air, but go ahead. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, Mark, I, I completely agree with you. I love my DWC 2440 as well, but yeah, there's never enough time in the day to, to, you know, to, to use it as much as we'd like. Um, now, bro, following the, you know, uh, the ROI uh, and kind yeah. of in that same category is, is, is okay. What role does your digital wood carver play in your business? Right. Uh, and we had uh, 18% say that they use the digital wood card for niche products, you know, just doing kind of one offs or, or, right. or niche things uh, and all. And the overwhelming 82% said it's their core machine, you know, for their business uh, of the of the uh, of the feedback that we got from the survey. So that was pretty cool. So a majority of the customers, that's they're using that to make their right. product that they're selling and stuff, uh, which was pretty awesome. Um, well, and and it certainly is, you know, backing up, uh, we, we do feel it is affordable and the price has come down, but, uh, honestly in a woodworking shop, it's, it's going to be one of your highest price pieces of equipment to, that is in that shop. I mean, there's other, you know, pieces of equipment that are, uh, can be more depend on, you know, the quality or sure. how big and stuff like that, but it is a chunk and we realize that. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, uh, it, it's uh, it's one of those things. It's an investment, right? You're you're uh, you're making an investment, and when it comes to getting the best bang for your buck, uh, we would love you to join the Digital Wood Carver family uh, for sure. You know, uh, because we feel that we do take good care of our customers, and 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 being there for them when they need them. The customer service, twenty four hours, six days a week. We are closed on Sundays, uh, but uh, the classes we teach and all that stuff. So uh, the one thing that you want to do is because you are making an investment. Uh, of that size is make sure you make the right investment with the right company and make sure you get the support that you need after the fact to help you grow, right? To help you keep moving forward, keep that machine running and everything. And we would love you to come over and join us uh, for that. And I'm going to just push that because I'm very right. proud of what we do with our customers and all. Um, still in that ROI kind of category, bro, we asked, um, were there any additional digital wood carver accessories that help contribute to your business? And the, this question, I wasn't expecting the answer, uh, but uh, we had 25% uh, 
say that the laser alignment tool, our little laser X that helps you set your X and Y zero uh, at the beginning of the job, that laser alignment tool is a big contributor to, uh, is the accessory that contributes to their business. And I guess that helps them with quicker setups uh, yep. and, uh, and going and all, but I, I thought that was kind of uh, a that cool response. I wasn't, that was the last thing that I expected on the list, but uh, our fourth axis got the overwhelming four, uh, 50%, uh, you know, uh, the fourth axis rotary for being able to do turn type projects right. and table legs, spindles right. and things like that. And then of course, another 25% uh, uh, is our laser engraver. The six watt laser engraver is a contributing factor to their business. So I thought that was pretty cool, but I couldn't, I couldn't believe the laser alignment yeah. tool made it, but I, I thought that's pretty cool. Um, I'm kind of jealous that the, the, the quick set guy didn't quick set tool didn't make it. <laughs> yeah, maybe but, on the uh, next survey we can get. Right. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. So we went on, um, uh, and you know, I wanted to uh, kind of uh, start talking about software now, right? Right. We, uh, with Digital Woodcarver, we work with the Vetric software. We're partners with Vetric, uh, and we deal with the Vetric VCard Desktop, Vetric VCard Pro, and Vetric Aspire. Uh, those are the software options that we could bundle in with our with our machines and packages and things. Um, and so, with the uh, Vetric software, I feel that it is. Uh, very versatile, very user friendly and a low learning curve because not only is the software uh, easy to use, but they're, they're, they're training. They have hundreds of hours of training videos that come with the right. software. They have a, a beautiful interactive manual that when you click on a tool in your software, you can click on this little question mark, get help on this. And it'll take you right to the page in that manual uh, to get the information that you want. And then, because Vetric is so popular, there's a lot of outside resources right. like myself on YouTube and stuff that teach the software and all. So uh, it's, it's, it, uh, I'm, I'm really happy that we partnered with Vetric, you know, uh, those years ago. Uh, and it, was one of the also, best it was one of the best things we did. Sorry, Laney, didn't mean to interrupt. No, me. no, it's all you. Yes. Yep. Um, it, it certainly took our, you know, our questions down a whole lot. And uh, they, they've done very, very well. And people have been very receptive of it since we, we changed. Um, and you was talking about uh, the help. Uh, one of the things I tell, you know, when I do trainings or if you pick up in Indiana and do a training with me in person uh, on pickup is that help, help content. I said, if you don't know, if you don't get anything else out of the whole thing, remember the help, help contents of the software. And they do an excellent job with that manual interactive push a button. What does this button do? gives you a description of what that does, a little illustration of it and the whole deal. So it is, it's been very, very nice. Absolutely. And I just want to give a shout out to Michael Icon. How are you doing, sir? Uh, hope things are, are going well for you and, uh, and, and everything. So thanks for joining us tonight and taking time away from the family. Um, John McQuillan, uh, I'm glad to see you're still around. You know, you got an older unit that uses Mach 3. If you ever want to, uh, uh, you can always stay where you are and, and be perfectly happy. We'll support you every bit of the way. But if you ever want to upgrade, we do have conversion kits to get you up and current, right? Um, so, Burl, uh, with regards to the software, um, we, we and we kind of already alluded to this, so I don't need to really harp on it too much, but there is a lot of, not only from us, for our customers, we have a new series that I just, I just filmed yep. and uh, on how to install their Planet CNC software, how to install their Vetric software, yeah. get you going right away, how to design your very first project and how to carve your first project. And then we have live classes every Tuesday night. So there's a lot of getting started videos, not only from the Vetric program itself built into it, right. but also with us at Digital Woodcarver and uh, everything that we provide to our customers and all. Um, so, uh, Aside from that, uh, something that we started in 2020 was one-on-one -on -one training, bro. We have additional training where if a customer wants a uh, continued education uh, to grow their skills, they can subscribe to a training. And it's a very affordable subscription uh, that they can pay monthly or annually uh, to get that one-on-one -on -one time uh, to, to either discuss a specific product uh, that they're trying to make or project, should I say, um, or, or if they're just trying to, you know, fine tune their skills in a certain area within the software or the machine. So I'm really happy about that, uh, that one-on-one -on -one training that we offer now. Um, Lainey, I want to point out one thing. You, you're, yes, uh, you're phenomenal at training and, and we got a bunch of customers that are commenting on the side that, that say that one of the things that, uh, and not to take away from Vectric, uh, Vectric software 
in their training, uh, it's phenomenal. But one of the things that I know you have made in some of the, the videos that you've done that is nice, it is for our particular product. So we, you know, your starter videos will go from complete beginning to complete, you know, making the project. And not that Vetri can't, it's just they, their videos cover just their software. And, you know, people want to know uh, how does it pertain to my digital wood carver? How do I set the board on there and different things like that. So I encourage people to start out maybe with some of our videos just from the standpoint that they go through the whole process um, versus just, you know, segments of the, the software pipe type of uh, uh, segment. So I wanted to shout out and you do an excellent yeah. job when you do that. Uh, well, I appreciate that. And one of the things that I just uh, like for 2021 that you're going to see more on the Digital Wood Carver channel is not only uh, do we have where I'm teaching the live classes on the Vetric every you know Tuesday night, but we're, they're going to be alternating. We're going to be doing in the shop training as well, where we're actually at the machine. Uh, so they're going to get more of that hands on for each of these types of different projects and stuff. And it's going to be very cool uh, because we've got a whole new uh, setup out there in my uh, uh, workshop where the machine is uh, with uh, the lighting and camera. So we're going to be able to do more in the shop type things. And that's uh, so that's kind of alluding to what you were saying as well, that start to finish. And that's that is a big thing. So very cool. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Um, all right, let's let's uh, let's talk a little bit about the learning curve, right? Okay, I can say it's an easy learning curve, right? Uh, you know, but what are our customers saying? So is a basic computer knowledge sufficient to learn to use the CNC? Uh, and we had only 9% said that there was a significant learning curve for them. And 91% uh, said, yes, uh, basic just computer knowledge how to turn on a computer and use it and all uh, and with a little bit of practice. And that's what that training and, and continue education and stuff does for you. Uh, practice makes perfect. Uh, that's what gets you up there and better. And uh, it's very uh, sufficient, you know, basic, just a basic knowledge of how to use a computer. And even if you don't know how to use a computer, don't let that scare you because we'll work with you uh, as a digital wood carver customer to get you up to where you need to be to use in your software and your machine uh, and everything. So, uh, so a lot of our folks, you know, agreed uh, that, you know, 91% that, that the software is pretty user friendly, right? 91% uh, 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 came in with that. Um, and uh, we had uh, coming back, we said, OK, how many of you or, or what was your prior CNC experience? How much prior CNC experience did you have, bro? And, and uh, with that, we had 27 um, percent said they had some. OK, yeah. we had 37 uh, percent say more. I don't know what more means, but they had more, maybe more woodworking or CNC. Uh, we had 18% uh, say none. And then we had another 18% said they had a lot. So uh, some of the, uh, most of the ones that came in uh, had some, some type of knowledge or experience of it uh, uh, in, in, in some kind of in the past and everything sure. as well. And, uh, and all uh, we turned around and said, okay, how long until you, felt confident. So how long a customer that's just getting started, how long do you think it would take them to feel comfortable with the software? Uh, we had an overwhelming uh, 46% say under a month, you know, within a month, you know, and I always tell, and I want to kind of iterate on that with the softwares, get help on this and their, their manual and stuff. If you took just a few minutes a day to learn even two or three of the tools a day and how to use them and over a very short amount of time, you wouldn't have a good knowledge of your drawing tools, which is where you right. spend 90% of your time. Uh, and it becomes more efficient on what's the right tool for the job that you're doing, right? And your design and everything. And so under a month, I, I definitely, I highly agree with that. Uh, we had, um, we had uh, nine, let me get my color codes gray here. We had 9% say they're still getting there, right? And as far as feeling confident, uh, we had 36% say it took them about two to three months. Uh, to get confident. Uh, and then uh, we had another 9% say right away, you know, and, and stuff. Uh, so uh, the 46% under a month, I'm going to say within that month or two, especially if you do kind of follow the digital woodcarver training program uh, as a customer. Uh, and again, we'd love you to come over and join the family. Um, the learning curve is a very low learning curve and it, it's a, it's a great lear learning progress, right? The progress and getting a little bit more efficient and everything. Uh, and also I agree with that. 
uh, on the learning curve. Uh, now, the big thing, sales channels, right? And when we say sales channels, we're not talking about, uh, you know, uh, CNN, Fox or anything, those type of channels. We're talking about online, out in the public, the markets, the farmers and everything. There are a number of, of sales channels out there. And we wanted to kind of get some feedback from the customers as to what they're doing, bro. Uh, and um, so uh, we uh, we asked the question, what are the best places to market your products and find new customers, right? Um we had uh, John McMillan. We we saw him earlier in the in the show come and said he mainly uses Etsy, right? However, he's branching on to Facebook Marketplace, which is you know getting pop. I think it's getting more and more popular. And then also Amazon Homemade. Now Etsy's a homemade project uh, product type of uh, right. almost like an eBay for homemade products and all. But now Amazon's getting into that market as well with Amazon Homemade. And I don't know if you've heard of that, Burl, but I, when I got the survey back, it was kind of the first time I've ever heard of it. And it's kind of a growing thing now. So they've got Amazon homemade, which is pretty cool. Um, and uh, we had uh, Mickey Good came and said that his local craft shows, his festivals, uh, they are um, where, you know, he'll, he'll sell, but you got to understand that not all art shows and festivals are the right yeah. fit. And what he meant by that was, is we have a, huge art show here and it's an art festival in Marion County and it's painting type art and things like that. The CNC, the custom carving all is not the right fit, but our other uh, craft fairs and farmers markets and, 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 and other markets all are a good fit, but that art show, even though it's a big market and everything, or, you know, a big marketplace as far as when they fill up the whole downtown, it's not quite the right fit for that particular type of product. You know, it's a, it's more of a, art, sure. you know, like painting art and things. Right. Uh, so you just got to make sure you, you, you're, you're spending your money wisely as far as, you know, your booth fees or whatever the case may be at the right types of markets for you and everything. Um, word of mouth. That is big. Grassroot. Uh, yep. Yeah. Grassroot. Absolutely. The word of mouth, you know, Hey, where'd you get that? That's pretty cool. Oh, I got that from John Smith. You know, he, he carved it for me. That thing right there is, is, is going to be your best seller. And if you do a good job and you're affordable and you're friendly, uh, and just good to your customers, you know, uh, you take care of them and, and give them what they want at an affordable price. They're going to spread the word uh, like crazy. So yep. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, and then uh, with me, I'm uh, just like Tim, local farmers markets, uh, you know, charity donations. Now, don't don't let, let me talk to you real quick about charity donations with charity donations. Um, you could. You're, you're giving from the good of your heart. You're, you're not looking to expect anything uh, in return. And uh, with the, when it comes to uh, charitable donations, you're giving, uh, you know, uh, let's say if it was for the local law enforcement, or whatever, you know, for retired veterans or fallen officers or things like that, you're giving back to the community the best way that you can. And sometimes when you give, you receive in return. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, we have a, a customer that he started out, he was just donating products to, to all kinds of things. And in return, these different agencies and departments started actually ordering things from him. Uh, and that just blew his business up. So, um, working with, uh, right. working with charitable donations, uh, you know, uh, and giving your product away. Uh, is is a good place. Uh, you, you don't always you, you never give something away expecting something in return like, oh, I gave you this. Give me this back. But right. you never know. Good, good things come to those who do good. Right. Um, you agree with that, bro? I do. And you you bring up a good point. It, it is one of those things. Um, and there's nothing wrong with with obviously you, you are given it. But I mean, that is a, a prime example. Um, it's also a way that you're showing off how your product looks and good to an audience that is, you know, um, you know, that's, that's there. So there's nothing wrong with that as being, uh, people do it all the time. Companies do it. That's what the advertising is, is, you know, you, you know, like at a, whatever, a baseball, you know, field that has different things on the, on the side. I mean, they're, yes. they're paying to help support that baseball team by, you know, advertising. So that's kind of what you're doing. So yeah, I, I love yeah. that concept. Uh, I believe that is a, a very, very good way of doing it uh, to a charitable there. So 
Absolutely. And we had uh, Gary chime in, you know, talking about craft sales and Facebook was options right. and uh, some products and local boutiques. Uh, there are stores out there that will either let you, they'll either buy your product uh, and sell, or they'll let you co-sign uh, consignment, consignment shops and stuff. You can rent shelf space from them uh, right. and things. And that's always a good thing. So that's, uh, I like George's feedback on that. Now, yeah, that uh, I just do want to say one thing uh, real quick to Nash Wood. Nash, there is no sign behind me. So if you wanted to carve something to hang on the wall for me, you're more than welcome to, but I appreciate that. Because <laughs> even though I have a digital wood carver, I'm here doing live videos. So you want to make me a sign, I'll take it from you, man. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> and my wife and my wife bought that one there, so I didn't make it either. So <laughs> absolutely. Now, Burl, uh, we we wanted to preface the the different markets that are out there and ask them what their top performing sales channels were for, for, for many of the people. Um, we had 54% say Facebook, right? Facebook, social media. I mean, everybody's almost everybody's on Facebook and stuff. Uh, we had 15% um, say their website yeah. uh, is, is a good sales channel for them. We had 8% say Craigslist. I didn't think Craigslist would make the market, but it did. Uh, and then we also had another 8% say YouTube. Uh, and then 15% use Etsy, right? So 54% Facebook and Facebook marketplace. And just, you know, right. when they post something on their Facebook page, all their friends and family and, and other people are like, Oh man, that's cool. Can you make me one? And all of a sudden, you know, that's how it goes. So, uh, and, and then Facebook marketplace is good too. And then of course now a new sales channel that is out there. I haven't done a whole lot of research on it, but Amazon homemade. Right. Um, all right. So now challenges, right? It's all good so far, right? We're talking about all these positive things, and it's and it's it is it it really is a positive experience. We're not we're not just kind of uh, you know just uh, uh, pumping it up and all. Uh, uh, I, I truly believe that uh, owning a digital wood carver is is a great thing uh, to help you generate income uh, for your household or your necessary expenses or whatever. A little uh, side cash or it could be your main income. Uh, but uh, something great for the family to do together uh, and, and just, uh, you know, something to pass the time if you're doing it as a hobbyist. I think it's great. But with everything, there are challenges. Right. And so we asked with any new business, uh, there's going to be challenges and obstacles to overcome. What were yours? Right. And so uh, and that was a fair question to ask because it can't all be hype. Right. So uh, we had, uh, you know, the uh, Mickey come back and said, you know, determining where to sell his items was his biggest challenge. OK, determining what markets to use. Remember, I told you some markets are, uh, you know, better than others and stuff. Um, and and then, uh, you know, they they felt that some, you know, markets people were looking for. It was a particular market where they're looking for bargains. Right? right. And it wasn't quite the right fit for them because they were having to kind of reduce their 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 price level uh just to get those bargains and also uh you know fine art shows wasn't right for them and so they ended up going with other craft shows and festivals and all and then um uh uh that was kind of one of their biggest challenges and that's that's a fair challenge you know finding the right place to promote your product and sell your product um not trying to do too many products at once pick <laughs> one Good thing, one thing and do it well and then move on to the next. And we talked about this earlier. That was kind of one of the first things we prefaced is don't try to do everything. Because if you look at CNC project ideas on Google, holy camoly, you'll get overwhelmed with so many amazing things. Don't try to do everything at once. One or yeah. two good things, do it really well and grow from there. Right. So that was a good feedback on that one. Uh, I got I to gotta talk about it. You just talk about Nashwood. Yep. I think he has given me a sign and my hat. My wife does have it hanging in, in our house someplace now. So that's, oh, that's too funny that's that he'll make us one. That's uh, <laughs> I believe that's Bob. If, if I'm not mistaken. So. Absolutely. Well, very cool. That's too funny. Uh, yep. And, and here's the tough one, right? In some cases, in some areas, finding good wood at fair price right now, Burl, Burl has a bit of an advantage and I have a little bit of an advantage as well because I have a Sawyer not too far from me, but Burl, you know, he's got, he's got contacts at Woodmiser and all. So Wood, um, what I did in Ocala, Florida here is I contacted some uh, tree services and asked them, hey, what do you guys do with the trees when you cut them out of people's yard? Right. And three of the companies of the five, they uh, took them and sold them to different mills and stuff. Uh, the other two companies uh, dumped their logs, 
And I told those companies that, you know, if, if I could save money on your bottom line and your dump fees and stuff, whatever you charge your company, that's fine. But if you get the three C's, cedar, cypress, cherry, walnut, pecan, anything cherry, or I already said cherry, but anything like that, white oak, uh, you can drop your logs off on my property. And they do. They'll drop logs off on my property. And then I can take those logs down to my Sawyer and for a very reasonable price, get them milled up into lumber. Uh, truck drivers have to pay to dump their pallets. Uh, you could literally throw an ad out on Craigslist, you know, uh, and, and say, hey, if you got pallets, you can dump them off a pallet wood. It's very cool to make a lot of different yep. signs and stuff That's with. Big, so yep. Rustic. Those are ways to obtain wood uh, and stuff and, and Corian, you know, countertop companies and things like that. But good wood at a fair price. Yeah. You know, uh, what I would say to that is find a local Sawyer in your area or a hardwood dealer. Uh, and uh, usually you can get some pretty good prices and, and get a relationship with them and stuff and all. So, bro, do you have any feedback on that particular thing? No, that's uh, that's good. Um, you know, if you can find your small uh, places, um, go to them. And one of the things that we can do, uh, cabinet companies too, um, because a lot of our projects <laughs> are smaller, um, these places will have cutoffs. And I know I have in the past uh, some wood products places um and even like your Lowe's and menards will have where they've defected you know a piece of board down to something that is not a you know clean 10 inch wide eight foot long they've had to chop it down and they'll bargain those and same as your trim shops your cabinet shops and stuff like that a lot of times they'll create a stack of this and they'll sell it to you more of a you know here you buy a, pal a pallet of this um and even lo like you say local sawmills um, if, if you could dig through their, you know, scrap pile per se stuff that they can't sell, you know, uh, out uh, a lot of times you can find wood and, and just, you know, negotiate around. So yeah, you, you're on the right market, um, you know, finding woods like that. Absolutely. And, um, uh, I want to, uh, say to, um, where are we at here? Bear with me a second, bro. Uh, I wanted to catch an answer uh, to someone. Oh, where'd his question go? Uh, whoever asked the question about what's a good unit to start off with, uh, stick with us. We're all we're gonna we're gonna be talking about that in the last few minutes of this here. We're about to wrap up, uh, bro, on this discussion, and we're gonna talk about yeah. uh, what's a good unit to get started and everything. Um, and so. Uh, Basically, some customers had no challenges, you know, uh, they'd expanded their business easily because it was they were adding a CNC to their business, bro. Uh, some of them, you know, had a hard time uh, uh, with the vinyl sign market, you know, kind of competing with that in their area. And then, you know, learning the software, right? That was the challenges uh, for everyone. And so, uh, guys and girls, as we wrap up, basically, the process is pretty straightforward. Design, carve, and create. Uh, come up with a design or a cool idea. The software is very user friendly. Uh, create that design, bring it over to the machine, do your carvings, whether it be maybe parts for a finished product or it could be the product itself. Uh, and uh, with the create uh, is creating that custom masterpiece. You can customize and add all kinds of things. So design, carve and create. That's kind of our motto. And that's really the one, two, three step uh, to a CNC uh, and everything. And as we get into this, uh, I wanted to answer that question. The best unit to kind of get your foot in the door and Burl, we're going to close out. We'll come back to the prices here in a second, but I'm going to bring Burl and I up as we have this final discussion here is we're going to be talking. Uh, if you'll join us uh, at the end of February, we're going to be talking about our DWC 1824 right. mini carver. Right. Uh, this is our bench top unit, 18 by 24 inch cutting area. Right. Uh, there's uh, accessories that can be added to it, like the digital laser, yeah. uh, the fourth axis and other things. But it's a great entry level unit to get your foot in the door and start making product to sell. Uh, bro, that right now, the price of the uh, mini carver comes in around twenty five hundred and seventy nine with the Vetra V car desktop software. Right uh, in the desktop software, Vetra V car desktop software and the Planet CNC software included in that price. Right. Uh, and um, would you agree? I agree. That's that's a good it is harder unit you know uh to get someone get the ball rolling yeah and we've we've got a numbers of people that uh and we've even got some of our high users that are still using the 1824 
uh, that are quite productive with it. But it is a good, and that's the whole, you know, the two main reasons that, that we developed the, the 1824 was, one was the space in your garage or your workshop. If it's very limited, uh, you know, the bigger unit, uh, it's not huge, but still, it takes up uh, about a three by four foot area where this one takes up about a two by three uh, foot area. Uh, the, right. the 24 it's an excellent way to start and you can one of the cool things with all our products um, is if you learn the the 1824 go into the 2440 or even clear up to the 5100 there's not a learning curve after that they all use yep. the same controller software the the design software even if you go from desktop to pro or even aspire Spire, you, right right you still you understand the software um, and, and I get that question quite often. We won't get on bunny trails here of software, right. which one's easier to learn. They're all the same. It just literally yeah. you're, you're adding more features and stuff right. like that. So, yes. And the one thing I like about the mini carver, it, all of our CNC's is the ability to do pass through carving or tiling, right? So we do have an 18 by 24 cutting area, but if I wanted to make a longer sign for someone, we have the ability to, and the, and the Ventric software will let us create our longer design and carve sections of it and just move right. the material down to carve, you know, that how, however many times we need to move the material to carve those different sections to create that full product. Right. So uh, it, even though it's a small footprint and, and affordable, get your foot in the door, you can right. still do uh, a lot of nice things with it. There, there's, yeah. there, it, I mean, they really, the, uh, I could do pretty much everything that I do on my 2440 with a mini carver as far right. as 3D carvings, 2D carvings and things like that. Uh, and, and things and it, you know, it just comes down to size and we have the ability to tile uh, and, and that's pretty cool. Uh, so we're going to, Burl and I are going to be the, discussing uh, the mini carver uh, on our uh, show next month. Uh, and uh, so definitely come in with that because we're going to be talking about it. Uh, we're going to demo it a, a little bit. And then, uh, you know, as the shows progress, we're going to talk about accessories and stuff. And yes, there are accessories that can be added to the mini carver, like our digital laser a little fourth axis and all a uh, little rotary and stuff. And Burl, one of the best things that I like about this and uh, 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 is a customer can start out with a mini carver. Mm -hmm. And if they, if their business grows or if they're growing, they, they can actually either purchase a larger unit or they could trade their mini carver in towards the purchase of a larger unit. Uh, and uh, with, with, with most of our units, we do have those trade-ins. Uh, and people, we've had customers that started out with a mini carver and they've traded up to the 2440 to a four yep. by four unit or a four by eight. Uh, yep. And uh, we've had customers that they actually have one, two or three 2440s in their shop, you know, rather than just trading up, they've just added more machines uh, and things. And we've actually had customers that had 2440s by mini carvers. Uh, to be able to do like ex these necessary accessory things while the bigger carver was doing other things. So specializing one thing. Yes, yep. absolutely. But we do have with digital wood carver, one of the things that we're proud about in Burl, I hope it's something that does continue, you know, as the years go on is, is that people can grow yep. with digital wood carver. We do have the products. We have a 1824, 2440 cutting area, four by four, four foot by four foot, and then a four by eight, foot machine. Sorry, I'm about to run into my shelf there uh, for our larger machines. So we have, you know, a, a wide range and some companies don't don't have that. So that's another thing when you're out looking for a CNC, make sure that, you know, the company you go with, uh, if you're going to grow, you kind of want to, you, you know, if you're a Bosch guy, right, you tend to kind of deal with Bosch products, right? And if you're a digital wood carver user, you can deal with digital wood carver projects and grow up to, you know, and, and with your, with your company and your business and on. Not a lot of companies offer a variety or offer things that we offer like training and support or trade in values and stuff. So keep that in mind when you're, when you're uh, doing your research and all. we, again, we really would love you to join the family and you know, all we're a great family guys and girls. Um, but uh, Burl, uh, we're going to be talking about the 2440 and stuff down the road and everything, but I just want to throw out some prices for anyone that is looking for a next size unit up. Uh, our 2440 is a 24 inch by 40 inch cutting area. It comes in a three axis uh, bench top package, three axis standard package with a stand. Uh, and it comes also as a four axis with a rotary. 
Uh, and uh, starting off with our three axis standard package, you're about $4,744 with the uh, vCard Pro software and Planet CNC and everything included. And then our four axis standard package for somebody that wants that 2440 with a rotary, uh, we're at $5,564. And right. now is the time, guys and girls, because Beryl, you know, uh, with the market and everything, uh, we as manufacturers have to kind of we have to kind of work with the market as well and, and, and gets what's dealt with us. So now is the time to purchase because come February 26th, there is going to be a price bump uh, yeah. and we just can't avoid it. We, we, we put it off as long as we could uh, and everything, but materials are getting, you know, they're getting bumped up and stuff. And so we have to kind of increase slightly. It's not a yeah. large increase, but it is an increase. So, uh, at these prices that I'm talking, twenty five seventy nine for the mini carver, forty seven hundred forty four dollars for the uh, three axis standard package of our twenty four forty, and fifty five hundred sixty four dollars for our uh, four axis twenty four forty. Those prices are good, and and up until February twenty sixth, where there will be a slight price increase on those. So now's the time. Come on over to digitalwoodcarver.com. Check out our website and uh, and everything, uh, and you know, and and. Bro, go ahead. I just want to uh, wrap up uh, with um, the, uh, oops, I want to wrap up with everything that we discussed tonight. Uh, there's an ebook uh, that you can download at our website, digitalwoodcarver.com. Start a CNC business free guide. All those words have a dash in between them. Uh, and, uh, or it's under the explore menu, start a business. You can find that ebook download. And um, if you do want to have, if you have more questions about Digital Wood Carver and stuff, you can reach us uh, at our toll-free number. I've got it here on the screen, 833-392-2621, extension one, or sales at digitalwoodcarver.com. But definitely check us out on our website. Burl, uh, do you uh, want to take, we are at an hour, but do you want to take about five minutes to uh, answer some questions that might have rolled in? Well, I, I will. And there were some things that popped up. People are asking if we're doing demos. Uh, our kind of format this year is probably, um, you know, every other month we'll have a product and, and stuff like that, how we're going to do our thing. So, uh, you know, hang with us on these. Uh, we didn't show an actual uh, piece of equipment tonight. Um, you know, hang with us. But we have done these before and done our, you know, product demonstrations. Uh, live on these. So if you go through some of our previous videos that we've done, you can find those. Um, John, um, or yep, John, that's a question that you'll need to contact me directly. I don't want to get on uh, <laughs> this video is about extending your your digital wood carver. Um, there's pros right. and cons with that. So we won't get into that, uh, that, that detail here online. Um, what were some other questions? Uh, I, I got them right here, bro. So one of the questions was, do we sell this type of digital wood carver machine? Absolutely. We are digital wood carver. Uh, yeah. We are based out of Martinsville, Indiana, and we manufacture the digital wood carver CNC. It units. Yep. Uh, yeah. everything. So uh, Martinsville, Indiana. Uh, and uh, so that was one of the questions, bro. I just wanted to kind of clarify right. that we are, even though we're having this discussion, we do manufacture those uh, units. Yep. And we build them, uh, the guys build them every day. Uh, right now we're backed up. You was talking about, um, you know, uh, buying products. Generally, we try to keep within one to two weeks. We don't like to get it more than that right now. Sometimes you was talking about prices of material and stuff raising, um, but is is also, and some of this is just temporary, you know, with the uh, restrictions and stuff, but we're having a little bit of trouble getting, you know, uh, certain things that we have to purchase, but uh, we are up and running uh, when it comes to that. So. And uh, Tom Murphy asked, what was the sample size for the poll? Four people? No, uh, all of our customer base, which was about 30, oh, what are we at? 3,000, 3,200 customers like that. Uh, was the sample size for the poll, uh, Tom Murphy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah it was, it was uh, and I know you and Jake did that and sent it out. We had some good response. Um, certainly, you know, we, there was only, there wasn't as many people that, was willing to share their names and we never do that unless we get permission of that ahead of time. So if you've seen some of the multiple names on it, um, but we did, it, it was a pretty, pretty large poll, but um, we only shared the ones that were willing to do uh, comments and stuff like that. Absolutely. Uh, Diego Rodriguez, um, you're interested in the CNC, would like some more information. Uh, you can definitely uh, contact us at sales at digitalwoodcarver.com. 
Uh, you can check out our website, digitalwoodcarver.com. And uh, earlier, just a few moments ago, I mentioned the prices and stuff of our units, our 2440 and our 1824. Uh, we do have a four by four and a four by eight, our commercial line units. And um, our four by eight runs $15,250. Our four by four is $12,825. And um, uh, but uh, you can absolutely email sales at digitalwoodcarver.com or call us at our toll free number, 833-392-2621, extension number one. And I'd be happy to answer any question you have. Sure. Um, Burl, let's see here. Uh, I didn't see any others unless you see some. Um, I, well, a lot of comments. So I want to thank everybody that was giving good comments and feedback. I really appreciate that. That really helps uh, kind of push uh, the message that, you know, it's, it's a good company, good machine. So thank you all for that. And um, let's see here. I did have one person that the DWC quick set tool was their top tool for them, bro. Cool. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. Uh, I am. I think I answered uh, the question. Let's go down. Virtual wintering when bits entered. Uh, okay. So I'm assuming you have to enter the bit size. All right. So someone, I, I think they're having a talk with each other about the bit size, but when you're working in the Vetric software, you have what's called a tool database that lists all of your different size tools and types of tools. And when you create a design, you're going to be choosing a tool for that design. Is it a V bit, a 60 degree V bit? Is it a ball nose bit? And you have a tool database uh, for that. And uh, with the digital wood carver customers, we provide you a library that you can import that's already populated with all the uh, most common tools and their speeds and feeds and everything. So uh, that, that kind of helps along the way, uh, Johnny. Uh, let's see here. And Burl, I believe uh, that I, uh, that was it. And uh, any financing options available? That was the one that I was looking for. Uh, we do not offer financing, but we do work with a company called Time Payment. Uh, you can go to our website, digitalwoodcarver.com. There's a link at, on the uh, homepage of our website uh, for Time Payment. Uh, they are a company that offers uh, financing to individuals or businesses. Uh, we don't know anything. I, 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 we don't we don't get involved. That relationship between the customer and Time Payment for their financing is between them. Digital Wood Carver doesn't get involved. We're just the ones selling the product. Uh, but uh, uh, we have worked with them for a number of years and uh, and everything. So uh, that would be the financing option besides going to your local bank or your credit union and things like that uh, and everything. Uh, Burl, as far as all the questions, I believe that's all that I saw. Uh, and I'm sorry if I missed any of y'all's questions and right. stuff. I will go back through uh, and uh, I'll try to comment in the comment section and stuff. And if your question didn't get answered, you can absolutely post that question in the comment section of this video and I'll go back and reply to it. So you'll have it there just in case I can't get to the chat questions, post your question in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer those uh, in the comment section of this video because it'll be on our channel for people to watch in the future. Burl, I really appreciate you tonight uh, hanging out with me and I look forward to these shows every, every Wednesday, last Wednesday of the month. I think it's gonna be good for people to kind of get to know uh, digital wood carver and also some cool things about cnc and how to use the cnc and more specifically how to use their digital wood cover right because you're all going to go get one today right <laughs> um but uh okay the, uh let me get bear with me a second here uh that financing let me hide that comment uh, it didn't, uh there we go let me learn how to left click there we go uh bro you want to say your goodbyes and uh we'll close out well, certainly will. And we appreciate everybody. I know uh, last couple of days we've had a lot of phone calls and had a real good response. I don't know how many people come out to the show, but uh, we appreciate it. Uh, it's kind of our, our way since we can't get out there to do these. And hopefully, I know it's not the same as doing shows. Uh, we miss being out there and, and rubbing elbows with, with uh, customers and stuff. But uh, appreciate you coming, uh, supporting us. And uh, if you do have questions, feel free to to reach out and um, we appreciate it. And everybody have a safe evening and uh, we'll see you next uh, a month from now. Uh, I believe our next one is on the uh, DWC 1824. So come back yes. out and we'll uh, see you again then. Absolutely. And uh, again, I'm Lainey Shaughnessy. And even though Burl and I are doing uh, shows at the end of every month, if you'd like to learn more about the Vetric software, just to kind of get an idea and a feel for how, 
uh, it is to use it and everything. You can absolutely check out our channel Spindle TV every Tuesday night where we do live design classes and all for the customers and stuff. And it's free to join on, on YouTube and everything. And um, uh, for uh, uh, Stephen Fisher, yes, the digital wood carvers are manufactured and made here in the USA in Martinsville, Indiana. And we do have our uh, another factory, it's it's all part of the same company, in Shoals, Indiana. So they're all manufactured and made here in Indiana. So we're proud of that in the USA. And uh, thanks for throwing that into the chat uh, for everyone. Go ahead, bro. I have to make up one point. Uh, John said he remembers uh, buying one of them and, and we carrying it out of my basement. Those brings back some fond memories. It, it was a time uh, back then, literally, there was one, uh, basically me and a couple part-time guys and as of now, there is 19 employees uh, plus, uh, you know, Laney on staff with Digital Woodcarver. So uh, we have grown quite a bit over the years. And they are in, in Indiana is where they're manufactured, uh, our, our products. So, yep. And last thing uh, is for uh, Johnny November. I'll go ahead and uh, if that's the name that you that's going to be on the Digital Wood Carver Owners Group, I'll let you join. I'll give you a two day pass in the group so you can check it out, ask questions, talk with the customers. Uh, you've been talking with Michael Akon, who invited you. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I'll, I'll let you in for a couple of days to uh, get to know uh, our product and our customers and stuff and, 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 and everything. And again, everybody, thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it. And uh, if you're not subscribed on our YouTube channel, please hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you get notified of our videos. And if you liked this content and you're looking forward to seeing more of it in the future, definitely hit that thumbs up because it really helps the channel. All right, everybody, until next time, we'll see you soon.